early in the morning, in fact, it's somewhere in the ballpark of 2 o'clock in the morning this morning, House and Senate leaders released the six-bill minibus spending package. And, of course, it set off a mad scramble to try to get a, a floor vote in uh, both in the House and the Senate before midnight tomorrow night to avoid a partial government shutdown. Well, joining me now to discuss all of this and more is Congressman Kevin Hearn, who is the chairman of the Republican Study Committee and a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. He serves the 1st Congressional District of Oklahoma. Congressman Hearn, always great to have you on the program. Welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to be with you, Jody. Good to see you. All right. Uh, wow. Uh, this bill comes out early, 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 the wee hours of the morning, over a thousand pages to try to sort through. Uh, so I know you. there's no way you've had time to go through it all, but at least some of your initial thoughts. What's in this thing? What are your thoughts about it? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we've had indications, obviously, uh, being in, in, in some of the leadership meetings, you know, we know what's been coming down. And so, you know, there's obviously we had to wait on CBO to get some scoring out to make sure that all the, the numbers were in the right place. But, you know, the people of the first district of Oklahoma uh, sent me to Congress in 2018 to bend the spending curve to get our fiscal house in order. Uh, you, you know, I've talked about this, the budget that the RSC puts out every single year uh, balances. This is uh, some, this appropriations package is, is contrary to that. Uh, we looked at in our, in our budget of sealing the border, you know, getting immigration under control. This appropriations package does not do that. It spends a little, mo little bit of money on beds, but that's about it. Uh, there's still a mandate out there that ICE can release people and adding some 10,000 beds is not going to change anything. So I, I don't see anything in here that's going to convince me that I need to be voting yes on that. And so we'll see where it goes on the vote tomorrow, uh, excuse me, the vote that goes today and, and see where that happens. Well, and I do want to get to the RSC budget. I'm glad you brought that up because that's always a great budget. And I'd like to get some of the details of what's at the, in there uh, for 2025. But, uh, Congressman, this has to be extremely frustrating. I know it was for me when I was there serving with you, where we have yet again an example that has uh, come to be famous for Nancy Pelosi's statement of this is yet another bill that let's pass it to find out what's in it. And that is certainly no way to run a country, is no way to spend more and more money. Uh, what are you hearing from some of your colleagues about this? Are, are, are people getting frustrated and tired of this type of procedure that continues to happen over and over? Well, certainly it's uh, been going this way since you know 2000, roughly, since the budget and appropriation has been done on time and the Senate has done their job and we funded the government on time. Uh, I've not even actually voted on a single budget uh, on the floor of the House since I've been in Congress for six years. Now, think about that for a second. And both Democrats and Republicans have talked about getting you know back to regular order, getting our fiscal house in order, and we've not even voted on a budget out of the budget committee on the floor of the House. And so, you know, how can you how can you get spending under control if you don't even know what you're you're, you're going to budget it on? It's like every person in our district across the state of Oklahoma, across the country, continues to ask that. Uh, how can you get spending under control? If you don't even have a budget. You know, these are simple things that you and I both know being. You know, you being in Congress, me in Congress, is, and it's very frustrating to say that we're going to do something when we get the majority, but we're just not doing it. Well, so how do you how do you see this playing out? At the end of the day, this thing comes to the floor. It's coming. Um, what do you anticipate is going to happen? Uh, well, it's about 11 o'clock on Friday morning. We're going to vote on it. And uh, we're going to beat the deadline so there will be no government shutdown. The Senate's probably going to vote on it around midnight so that uh, avert any shutdown. Of course, it would be over the weekend. We're not on a military payday, so there's nobody going to fill the brunt of this. And, uh, you know, we'll be funding the government at roughly $1.66 trillion. Um, and we'll move on down the road. Uh, we're seeing, you know, $2 trillion deficits on the horizon, a trillion dollar plus interest on the debt, uh, you know, next year. Uh, which will be more than we're spending on our military. And that will be the second highest uh, mandatory spending item, meaning interest on our debt, uh, only second to Social Security. It will have passed Medicare. And so, you know, we're quickly going to a place of insolvency. If not for the ability to print money, we would be bankrupt a long time ago. 
And it's just not, you, know, you mentioned, it's not a way to run a country. It sends messages to places like China that we can't even, you know, we, we look inward and we're complaining about the rest of the world and we can't even run our own house. Yeah, it's 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 frightening. And now uh, I'm hearing reports that we're going uh, spending an additional trillion dollars about every uh, three or four months. It's just it, it's frightful where this thing is coming and the brakes have to be put on. And speaking of those brakes, the Republican Study Committee, which you are the chairman of, released uh, their budget yesterday. I love the title of it, uh, Fiscal Sanity to Save America. I mean, that is spot on. So tell us a little bit about that budget and, and what's in it. Well, it balances in seven years. It is uh, is a pathway to a balanced budget that we have done now for certainly my four years, two years as the chair of the Budget and Spending Task Force, and now two years as chairman of the RSC. Um, it, it's a pathway, not the only one, but as I've said, show me another way. Let's debate, you know, how we get to a balanced budget. Contrast that with Joe Biden's budget that just came out. It never balances. Uh, we cut uh, trillions of dollars in taxes for American people. Contrast that to Joe Biden, who spends, you know, raises taxes by $5 trillion. We secure the southern border versus a border that's wide open in Joe Biden's budget. We look at energy security versus, you know, this radical green climate agenda that he has. And it's the most pro-life, most pro-family uh, budget that we've ever put out. And so this does all the things to, again, as the title says, restore fiscal sanity to America. And you can't just talk about it. You have to put a roadmap out. And we've done that. And we're anxiously hoping we'll get a chance to vote on a budget so that we can put this as an alternate budget. And I would argue that we should all, as members of Congress, vote on Joe Biden's budget to see where the Congress is really at the, uh, versus, you know, fiscal sanity versus something that's completely opposite of that and what you see in the president's budget. That's a good idea. I'd love to see that as well. I think the majority of Americans would love to see those votes. I, you know, I was looking earlier today, just uh, scanning over some of the things in the RSC budget, and it didn't take long to, to see where the White House is already attacking it. Uh, specifically, uh, the thing that jumped out in me is how they're uh, going after Social Security, saying that you're uh, that you and the, the Republicans are going after Social Security. What's your response to that? Well, I said this last year when the White House, uh, you know, went directly after me. They were asking a press conference at the White House, and the White House responded. Uh, Corinne Jean Pierre responded with some diatribe, and then the the last two sentences were, you know, I think were the hallmark of the budget. And she said, "This budget will undo all the great work that Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, has done in the last two and a half years." I think that is a testament to what this bu budget does. It balances. And again, I'm anxiously waiting to see. Uh, their response on the entire budget. Uh, last year, the press, you know, obviously came after me about Social Security and Medicare, and I stopped them all. And I will say that again to them, as I did in the press conference this morning. Show me one place in this budget that we're not, we're being irresponsible. We're trying to save Social Security, save Medicare. Everybody that's not in an elected position says it has to be done. Every institution, whether it's left leaning, moderate, or right leaning says that the Social Security and Medicare are going to be up for cuts of you know 15 to 21% over the next seven years. We have got to do this because doing nothing is what is radical. Well, Congressman Kevin Hearn, thank you so much for the incredible work and leadership that you exhibit there on Capitol Hill. We're deeply grateful and thank you for taking time to uh, out of your busy schedule, schedule to join us here on Washington Watch. Thank you, Jody, I really appreciate it.